<laughs> the future of display technologies is here right now. It just costs a lot of money. And most people might think, why would I ever need to have a display with a refresh rate of 7,680 hertz? That sounds crazy. And this is sample on hold. So we are not talking about a flickering technology to improve motion. This is not plasma technology advertisement where they used to say 600 hertz and, and it was actually 60 hertz. It, it was just flickering 10 times per frame. This is raw, sample and hold, full HDR brightness. You actually need to get 7,680 FPS on your games. Mind blowing. So of course, we're not gonna get there with Unreal Engine 5. <laughs> let's, let's get that out of the way. Uh, but we're going to get there with probably, this is my speculation, probably with asynchronous reprojection, frame generation, AI, a combination of all of that. So basically your PC is not gonna be rendering all those frames. That would be, it wouldn't make any sense because you much rather, you know, increase the quality of the pixels. I don't like that term. But yeah, you much rather get better shadows, higher resolution, higher fidelity uh, than to sacrifice so much if we could even get that performance to get this level of such a high frame rate, okay? So what I'm saying right now is, yes, we will be able to get that performance. Yes, it's going to look good. Your PC is not going to actually be rendering that many frames. It's just going to be generated but now what would the benefit be still? Oh yes, it's gonna look great in motion. Everyone knows that, you know, 120 FPS looks better when you move the camera than 60 FPS. Competitive players definitely appreciate even 480 Hertz OLEDs that we have today. And a lot of people think that that's end game. It just looks so clear right now. Why would you ever need more than that. Even 1000 Hertz sounds crazy <laughs> for a lot of people. So what's the real benefit exactly? What would be the benefit of getting this <laughs> level of performance based on the Blur Busters law? So what I'm going to tell you right now, it is very scientific, but you can actually test this yourself with your own display and to realize that what I'm telling you is actually exactly right. And it's not that difficult to understand. Let's say you have a 120 Hertz TV. You go open the UFO test and you change the speed of the UFO. So usually, a default is 960 pixels per second. So what does that mean? A speed measure, measure in pixels per second. That means the object is moving left to right. Your screen has a certain amount of pixels left to right. If you have a 4K screen, we have 3840 pixels. So if you are moving at 960 pixels per second, and you have that 4K uh, resolution, how long is that UFO tech test going to take to move from left to right? So if you divide the amount of pixels you have by the speed, 960 pixels per second, you get four. So basically that means that the UFO test would take four seconds to go from left to right if you are moving at 960 pixels per second. If you have a 120 hertz display, you will realize that that's actually very fast and it looks very blurry, extremely blurry. So sample on hold 120 hertz, you can clearly see that that's not enough, okay? Because four seconds to go from left to right is a very long time when we are actually playing games we move faster than that. We move the mouse a lot faster than that and the enemies move on screen 
a lot faster than that sometimes. So you can clearly see, yes, we need more, but but six, seven thousand six hundred and eighty hertz. You, you you cannot see it. Why would we need that much? Okay. So now let's do this. If you have a one hundred twenty hertz, and I'm putting that example because it's most of the TVs today are at least 120 Hertz. At least what people use for gaming. So if you change the speed of the UFO test to 120 pixels per second, you will see that that UFO test looks perfectly clear. So what does that mean? That means one pixel of motion blur. That is half a pixel of motion blur at the trailing edge and half a pixel of motion blur at the leading edge. And I am assuming that your display has ideal gray to gray, so the responsiveness of the pixels are ideal for the refresh rate, which is not always the case, but at such a low speed, it is very unlikely that you're going to see any, you know, crosstalk or any trailing artifacts. Uh, and most likely it's going to look perfect, which is considered uh, one pixel of motion blur, okay? So at 120 pixels per second in your 120 hertz sample and hold display, the UFO test looks absolutely perfect. Now, if you increase the speed to 240 pixels per second, it still looks very good, but now the alien eyes, the pupils of the alien eyes, are going to start to look a little bit blurry and if your display has some limitations, so it, if it doesn't have ideal gray to gray, so the responsiveness of the pixels are not ideal for the refresh rate, now you might start seeing more um, you know, defects in motion. But still looks pretty good. So you might think, oh, it's okay. I don't need more than that. But you will realize how slow on your screen that UFO test is going. Make sure you have no scaling on Windows, so that there's no scaling on, or on your Windows, and you don't have any zoom on the browser. So you actually see the speed, how long it takes on your screen to go from left to right. So you realize that's actually very slow. I need more than that. I need faster than that. So now the thing is, if you get one of these uh, 480 hertz OLEDs, which OLEDs have ideal gray to gray, for the refresh rate. So they closely follow the UFO, uh, they closely follow the Blur Buster's law, which is what I am basing my explanation on. So if you get one of those 480 Hertz OLEDs and you change the speed to the UFO uh, test to 480 pixels per second, it looks perfect. If you increase it to 960 pixels per second, it looks almost perfect, but you see that the alien eyes are a little bit blurry. Uh, so, but then you realize, okay, well, it's taking four seconds to go from left to right on my 4K uh, screen. That's very slow. So what do you need? So what would you consider to be perfect, to have perfect motion clarity? What would that be? Well, that would be how fast can you individually, how fast can you eye track an object moving left to right on the screen? And of course, the screen size is going to matter. If you have a very small uh, screen, you might be able to eye track the object uh, you know, easier. If it's uh, uh, more harder and if it's bigger, it might be easier to eye track the object because imagine the screen is the size of, of a wall, even if it's moving very fast, you might st still be able to eye track that object. So ideally, you want to have enough hertz, you want to have enough frames, sample and hold, so at your fastest eye tracking speed, you get ideal motion, which is considered one pixel of motion blur. So the question is, how fast can you eye track the UFO test? For me, in my opinion, I mean, anyone could eye track an object 
that takes half a second to move from left to right. I don't think that's going to be a problem for anyone. So half a second, let's, let's think about it. If at 960 pixels per second on a 4K screen is taking four seconds because we divide 3840 divided by 960, we get four. So that takes four seconds. If we double the speed, now it's going to take two seconds. And if we double the speed one more time, now it's going to take one second. Okay? So basically, 960 multiplied by 4, that's your 300, that's your 3840 pixels. So basically, for you to be able to see an object that takes one second to go from left to right and it looking perfect, so having one pixel of motion blur, we would need 3840 hertz, 3840 FPS. And that's going to take one second to go from left to right. You could eye track an object that's moving twice as fast easily especially in one of these big TVs. So now how, how much hertz you would need to be able to see perfectly clear an object that's moving left to right and it takes half a second, you would need something close to this, 7,680 hertz, okay? So you almost, you almost need 8,000 hertz. That's why this makes sense and you will be able to tell the difference 100%. Very easy. I can get this TV today, <laughs> open the UFO test, change the speed to 7,680 hertz, and it's going to look, it's gonna take, the UFO test is going to take half a second to go from left to right, and I will be able to see the alien pupils looking perfectly clear, which means, half a pixel of motion blur at the trailing edge and half a pixel of motion blur at the leading edge. So total one pixel of motion blur. That's considered to be perfectly clear at a normal viewing distance. So right now, today, I get this insane micro LED Hisense OP136, <laughs> I forgot, uh, TV. And I would be definitely able to tell the difference, of course, the problem is when we are talking about this level of perfection, we need to get rid of a lot of defects that we have on the games today. So of course, a game using TAA, temporal anti-aliasing, which adds ghosting, using all this, I mean, basically the way the games look today, they all depend of these temporal techniques that add ghosting and they make the games look worse in motion. We need to get rid of that issue first, okay? We need actually raw pixels. We need per pixel perfection so we can actually see this difference because we're gonna get to a point where getting a higher refresh rate doesn't matter because the games don't look clear. So we need to fix that first. Then we need to be able to use uh, something like a, a incredibly good frame generation, which maybe might not be possible to just use frame generation to get this high. Maybe it's going to be a synchronous reprojection alone with AI to fix the occlusion artifacts and all the challenges with asynchronous reprojection. So that's a technology that VR headsets use. So I, I have my, my, my hopes that that's going to be the final solution. So basically, it doesn't matter if your PC can render 100 or 120 frames or 400 frames, it wouldn't really matter. You will get this amount of frames delivered to your display, 7,680 frames delivered to your display. So you can actually see this. And of course, the more frames you get, the least amount of 
artifacts or defects you're going to see, but the input lag is going to be exactly the same. With asynchronous reprojection technology, the input lag is exactly the same. It doesn't matter if your PC is actually rendering 30, 60, 120, it doesn't matter. The only difference will be the interpolation artifacts and, and all the, the things that make you notice that you're actually not getting real frames, okay? But it's not the input lag. The input lag is gonna be perfect no matter what. Actually, I am afraid that once we have that, then developers are going to take advantage of that and then just target that you are going to be rendering or hope that expect that people just need to be rendering 30 FPS or 60 at most. And then the rest is going to be asynchronous reprojection. So they don't need to optimize their games and they're just gonna to try to push more and more and more and it becomes a mess. But once everyone understands that this is what we need, okay? That's the end goal. I think the direction is going to change. And VR might be something that make, uh, to make people realize that that's actually a better approach. Because with VR, we cannot tolerate uh, this ghosting issues and the blurriness of TAA. With VR, we get actually much cleaner and much better motion. Actually, VR headsets have um, the best of the best right now, I think is 0 0.25 milliseconds of persistence. So no, no flat panel can touch uh, that right now. Okay, we would need some a monster like this. Okay, so yeah, very interesting topic. Link in the description of the video to the Blur Busters Law. Uh, it was very difficult for me to understand the Blur Busters Law. I didn't understand it even after reading the article a couple of times. But the chief of um, the Blur Busters chief, uh, Mark Rehon, he was kind enough to reach out to me. And explain me so I can actually you know share um, good information okay um, so he was kind enough to answer my questions so hopefully I I was able to you know make you understand a little bit better but I highly recommend you to read that article it is uh, fascinating and I was in, I was amazed to see that this is actually happening right now that these companies know they know, they, they have people that are like experts and they, they know all this stuff. They know what is the best end game thing. It just costs a lot of money for now. And probably micro LED will not be the technology to be mainstream because it's very expensive to manufacture. Probably nano LED will be something more mainstream uh, because I was reading that it might be easier to print or manufacture for everyone and it's more efficient so but something like this will happen and i think it will happen definitely in our lifetimes and i will definitely be playing a game <laughs> at that fps um yeah and it's gonna be glorious so let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions